Um, that's it. I can invite questions because uh, this is uh, somehow practical. So maybe through the through questions from from you, then maybe we can engage as I'm answering. Maybe I can meet your needs. Right on. All right. Uh, th thank you so much, Zachary. Uh, this never gets old. So. Um, I, I got involved with List 5310, I think, here before last, and we almost always invite uh, Zachary um, to come and give talks centered around his experience running the IR. So it's never okay, so. uh, a, a couple of interesting things came up. I, I'm not sure if people are paying attention to uh, small little things like, um, uh, I don't know if Zach, oh, there we go, the, the graph that Zachary was on, right? Um, you know, I've always wondered, I mean, why, why is it that people from Kuwait are interested in the research we are doing, for instance? And there's a graph that you have with those batch at Zachary, where you have uh, heats coming in, such heats coming in from, is it China tops the list, and then you have South Africa. Um, now, we can explain China and South Africa, right? Because we, we, we know that the vast majority of um, people actually go to study, we have quite a number of uh, Zambians that go to study in China, and most of them will tend to do research that's line towards them, so that's probably where that is coming from. But I don't know why Kuwait is on the list, right? But anyway, um, um, Adam. So if you have I'm questions, in the conference. Oh, okay. yeah, in the office. Now I thought you were talking to me. I was almost saying, no, I'm not, Madam. It's light on. I'm not. Madame. Sorry, sorry. I'm anyway. talking to the, to um, the boss. I switched off the mouse. Okay. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, uh, a couple of interesting things, and, and then, uh, I'm not going to ask questions, but. Something else I wanted to point at is that, um, I don't know if you can remind us, Zachary, when, when was the IR actually set up? Uh, 2011. 2011. Right? I mean, so 2011, that's, that's, that's about nine years. But if you look at the amount of content we have in there, right, it's, um, it's not indicative of the fact that the IR has actually been around for nine years, right? Um, exactly. So marketing is important. These issues of policy are important, you know? Uh, um, we want to make sure that you have a lot of traction so that there's content the repository. So uh, if people have questions, please just feel free and uh, ask away. Oh, wow. It's quiet. Ring like that, no question. Mm -hmm. Very strange, right? Okay. Uh, I have a question intended around policies. People are thinking about what to ask here. Um, Hello? Is, yes, oh, yes, there yes. is a question finally. Harriet has a question. Yes, good evening. Good evening, madam. Yes, I wanted to comment on the resistance by the lecturers, by the academicians, mm -hmm. to the institution repository. But then I'm also I'm also looking at um, the policy that there is a, an existing policy that for them to be promoted they have to publish, and where they are published, I'm sure there are these uh, databases, journal databases where they publish. For you to get even when they refuse to submit to to, to, to submit onto the institution repository. You said you ensure that you get them from from where they publish. Now, are you not? Uh, don't you pay money? Is it not costly for you to to get them from the the journal as compared to where you just approach them and get them from themselves? Okay. Uh, we 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 have access to now. We have access to online journals. We have paid for access to online journals. Okay, so if you visited our repository, uh, with, there's this software which we which is called Shepa and Romeo. Okay, it has color tags. Okay, it it those color tags are on the types of access. How you upload that uh, journal article in your database? Okay, so for example, it, if it is the tag that journal, if they say this article the tag is red, you just say maybe you just upload the citation. If it is green, it's the full article. Okay, so in terms of the cost, the University of Zambia Library have subscribed to almost all the major journals. Okay, 
So what we do is we get uh, that journal. If we find that that article was done by a member of staff, we just simply upload it and then we follow the shape and Romeo using the, that software, then it will guide us how we shall. So in terms of cost, we are not spending any cost. There's no cost on our part. Okay. No cost on our part. But and, if uh, I can... And, uh, and, uh, and maybe, uh, I don't know, are these uh, policy binding, really? Because the intellectual property policy, I know that uh, you have it, it is uh, existing. If uh, that is what uh, they follow, when they when they publish for them to, to to be promoted is it not binding that they have to to deposit because especially if the, their publication have been funded by the university because when they are funded it becomes a public good okay, their intellectual property works they become a, a public good because they've been funded by public funds not that is it not that uh, enough for them to, to get their publication work into the library into the into the institution repository yeah uh, uh, most of the researchers at now unza now is not funding most of the researches which these lecturers are doing some lecturers even go to an extent of paying for it an article to be published in a journal i write on you can open that one is it Okay, all right. Yeah, all right. so yeah, so that's where the yeah. resistance. But now, because of the H index thing, the the academic promotion thing, mm -hmm. uh, we have seen a, 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 a huge surge in terms of willingness of lecturers to have their works a, a, a archived in our repository. Because that now, for yesterday, um, we are sorting out a case uh, mm -hmm. where uh, uh, the lecturers uh, they published in a journal at Journal of Humanities, it's an, it's an international journal, three lecturers from the School of Education published in that journal, but the problems which we are facing is only one, one lecturer has been cited. Okay, when they go to that software, publish and perish, only one, sec those, uh, the citations are only accruing to one member of staff. Okay, so those lecturers now have cited to publish, to, to archive that journal in our repository. And it has been evidenced the past month, if they archive it in our repository, all of them, the three of them are cited, they, they, they are receiving the eco share. So those are some of the benefits of publishing in our repository, because it sits on our Invest of Zambia website. And if you look at the graphs which Lighton was talking about, mm -hmm. uh, it, um, you know, any, anyone, if they want to search for anything credible, they will look for a, a, a popular university in that country. And the leading university in Zambia is the Invest of Zambia. Okay? So it, uh, publishing in our repository has more benefits. Okay. Uh, okay. I don't want to take uh, much of the time, but uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's like the universities are... Uh, look, I know this is administrative, but mm -hmm. the universities are, are, are like they are, mid, they are pinning down the, the researchers. Because instead of them funding they are, they are what? They are in their work. They now put a measure like a promotion so that they get whatever they want. Don't you think whatever, if at all, for example, the reputation, for example, for investors and that is not. It's not just that same lecture who's going to benefit. It's the entire university. It's the whole university. Mm. So for me, I feel that is very, very unfair that they use that strategy, a promotion strategy, to get what they want instead of funding for them to get what they want. Okay, that's your, that's your opinion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, uh, if I can ch chip in, right? Uh, and I want to take us back to Harriet's first question. Mm. Uh, both questions, actually, the first two questions she asked. Both questions can be answered by understanding what happens when you publish. Uh, and, and you want to draw a distinction or draw a line between conducting research and publishing, right? It, it turns out that um, irrespective of whether or not you're funded by the government or you invest to do research, once you're done with that research and you decide on where you want to publish that work, at some point you transfer copyright to the publishers. Now, exactly. when, you transfer, when you transfer the copyright to the publishers, the publishers will explicitly tell you what you're entitled to. 
these days it's not uncommon for publishers to at the very least allow you to supply metadata associated to the publication in a public space, right? So the copyright could allow you access to deposit just metadata associated with the publication with the link that's going to point to the original source of the publication. Also, the other variant is they will allow you to upload a preprint of the publication. So that's a copy after your work is, is uh, let's say, it undergoes the peer review process and it's, it's, it's accepted, right? So typically it won't have branding information associated with, with the publication venue itself. Uh, so so the, the publishing itself has little to do with who funds the research. And it's actually quite funny because um, it makes zero sense, actually, as Harriet rightly pointed out, which is why, um, if you've been following up with what's happening on the publishing space, there are organizations or institutions such as MIT that are trying to save our ties with uh, these large publishing houses like Alsevier, for instance. Because it doesn't make sense that I'm funded by uh, Zambian taxpayers, but for the Zambian taxpayers to gain access to the research that I produce, they need to pay money, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, so, so and, and this, thing, this thing came out in Boomba's talk. For, you, for those of you that were paying attention, she did mention that part of what they've done as, 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 uh, as they're crafting the so-called ingestion policy is they undergo a process of verifying what sort of rights authors have, depending on where they publish their work. Um, which venue they publish their work in, right? So um, you can upload a preprint of a publication depending on what sort of access rights you have. Uh, and then I, I thought I'd chip in on the, the part of uh, the promotion strategy that Harriet brought out. And this is, this is, by the way, based on just my own personal experiences. Uh, now, when, when, I'm, when you're employed at the UNS as a faculty staff, you're explicitly told that um, you're expected to do research, you're expected to teach, and you're expected to conduct what they call community engagement. So if you think about it, really, um, yes, you need money to do research, but part of that contract that you signed when you were employed was the fact that you do research, right? So the expectation is you're supposed to publish. And it turns out, really, that in, in as much as you, you, you wouldn't really be able to do high-quality research, you can at least, or if you don't have money, you can at least attempt to, to, to do a little bit of research and do some publishing, right? So, yes, uh, I'm affected by that. I mean, because I have no access to funding, it, it becomes really tricky to, to do research to attract good students, right? Uh, in other places, it's, it's unheard of to have postgraduate students paying their way through university, right? You're given a bursary so that you concentrate on the research. Uh, so so I, I hope that helps uh, clear the air on some of the issues that Harriet uh, raised, but all important questions that we should really carefully think, think about as we are setting up these IRs. Uh, any other questions? Hello? Yes, hello. Um, good, good evening. Uh, thank good you, evening. Mr. Zulu, for your presentation. Oh, um, I was following you up until I lost connection up to some point, but however, before I lost connection, I don't know if somebody has already asked this question, but however, I'm going to ask it because I needed to find out some clarifications. Mm. This where at some point, there were stipends that were attached to somebody submitting their publication uh, to the library, to, to the, yeah, to, for, to the department. Is it just me or is, uh, uh, yeah, 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 she's breaking. She's breaking. breaking. You, your phrase, if you, if you can hear us, do you want to to to, to just rephrase your? We, we couldn't get what you were saying. Could could you repeat your question?
Yeah, I think your connection is really bad. Now, you've also indicated that due to Yeah, I, th I think our connection is extremely bad. Uh, are there any other questions? I I'll try and see if we can have a send out a direct message to you um, later on, Zachary. It sounds like a very important question. Yeah, it was a very important. Ask, exactly. or, well, although all questions are important, right? Like, uh, mm. where are you right now? That's an important question. But anyway, are there any other questions? Oh, and she's back online. Uh, Euphrasia, are, are you, do you want to, we couldn't, we couldn't get a thing or a word you were saying. What was your question? Yes. I, I hope you can hear me now. Yes, yes. Yes. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Okay. So I was trying to get a clarification from Mr. Zulu. Uh, when he, when he uh, to the requirement for lecturers to submit their their works that mm. they had published initially and then you had to do away with it due to resources so my question was at that particular point in time how was it handled was it a policy issue or uh, i don't know was it just management issues i wanted to to know um how that was handled and then Yeah, I suppose we'll have to. Uh, um, hello? Yes, we can get you. can still. Yes, we can get you. Okay. Yes, the second question was that you, you were talking about finding out what policies are already in existence. Mm -hmm. So, and, and you mentioned of the, is it research policy? Yes. <laughs> Okay, could there be other policies that, that may relate to this aspect that we are talking about that you have used in the process of implementing? Right on. Right on. Right on. Yes, I can. Yeah, I think I've got something. I can. Can I? Can I? Yeah, yeah I think we can respond based on based on what you're able to. Yeah, yeah. But from from my experience, that uh, from my experience, uh, I think it's important to do a needs assessment before you decide to develop a policy. It's very important. And uh, from my 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 research, I think that is what delayed the development of our policy to what it is today. Okay, uh, uh, I think we didn't we didn't know or there was not synergy. There are there are other policies which are already, were already in place in the investor of Zambia. There's a copyright policy, there's a research policy, and other policies. So over time, I think it was just about uh, six months ago. Okay, uh, that's when we discovered that we had such policies. So we used them and incorporated them in the in our IR. Okay. Because most of them, like for example, the most of the research policy itself, most of the activities which are in our IRA policy, they were covered. Okay, we had, you know, the, the, like our 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 IRA mirrors the special collections. The way the the special collections, that's a hard copy version of our IRA. Our IRA mirrors the special collections. So you asked earlier about. Uh, the issue of the stipend, how it was handled before, okay? Uh, that one is evident because if you go to the special collections, uh, there were those gray cabinets in the sitting area, the gray cabinets, where we have the staff of prints. We have staff of prints, hard copies, okay? So the members of staff, what they used to do, if they have published in a journal outside the country, they just bring an article to the library and then it's photocopied and they are given something. 
Okay, so immediately that uh, something stopped due to funding problems. It was not a policy issue. We just stopped. Maybe you tell someone, oh, we shall pay you, we shall pay you. That person brings that cause, that cause. Two years, three years. So I find that uh, those people now stopped even uh, submitting those copies. And it's even there are uh, serious gaps in those uh, hard copy stuff of prints. Okay, there are serious gaps. If you visit those cabinets, you find that uh, they were last updated maybe five to ten years ago okay so people just uh, stopped submitting the hard copy versions from the of the journals to the to the special collections okay so the coming of this IR now we are we are lucky because the investor of zambia library we have subscribed to most of these online electronic journals okay so we we can get access to it we just is a photocopy it, scan it then we add it to our we archive it to our uh, Mm -hmm. following the shopper and Romeo. So either we do a citation or we can just, uh, we can just uh, uh, maybe archive the whole document or just the citation or the abstract, depending on the shaper and Romeo instructions. Mm -hmm. And by the way, what, what, what the platform Zaka is talking about does, it just tells you it's a quick way of trying to figure out what sort of rights an author has access to. Right, so it will tell you if, if you just search. I just pasted a link in the chat. If you if you type the name of the journal, it will exactly. outline if if the author can archive a preprint version of the publication or a post print version of the publication. You know, so it's just a quick way of trying to trying to figure out if you're doing the right thing, the legal thing as as a library in this case, whether you're allowed to actually um, archive a copy of the publication. Education. In certain instances, you're not allowed, and so it would be legal for you to do that. Uh, but, but I don't know if people have figured out, if I can just uh, latch on to the question, because I think it's an interesting question, or the, the statement that Zachary just made here. Now, now, the investor of Zambia has, last time I checked, you know, that was, was it early this year or something, 854 plus faculty staff. Is it, do you think, Zachary's question is directed to, do, do you think it's, it's feasible for you guys to to do what you are, you are planning to do, or what you've started doing, where you, you you are actually manually going to, or you're actually physically going to these different faculties and then searching for publications, going to the Shepa Romeo website, and then trying to figure out whether or not you have access rights. Is this something that's sustainable? Uh, last time I spoke to you, you told me it was just the two of you. Uh, there were just two people that were doing this. Unless exactly. it's the, the number of people has increased. I mean, I, Mm. Is there anything more you are doing uh, yeah, rather yeah. than mm. you just doing it yourselves as a library? Yeah, I, I think very soon there is going to be movement. Um, uh, I can now simply announce that uh, the, the policy uh, was approved and we are given a, a go ahead to start uh, using it. Okay, so in terms of uh, now we are trying to operationalize it. So even the staffing, we're expecting a major change in terms of staffing the levels, the number of staff. Okay, according to our establishment in the policy, we think we need about uh, four metadata specialists. There will be assistant deans to help us. Uh, and it's very feasible. Looking at the way the policy is, is structured, we shall meet those targets. That's why the, the, our major target take an interest light on look at the publications which Unza Press has, has, has done the, the past years. Most of those journals which they have published, and they are internationally acclaimed journals. The Journal of Social African Research is one of the oldest journals in Africa. Um, most of those publications are not online. Okay, so we have trained the editors in that department. That's why we are saying we are targeting. So those, those numbers, we have got 800 faculties. Most of their publications are aligned in that journal. The School of Law, they have got a very vibrant journal which they are publishing. Uh, the School of Law journal is hard copy. It's not available now. Okay. So that journal is published by the, 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 the UNSA Press. So I've, I've, I've got every hope that there will be, there'll be a very big difference immediately those people start uploading. But even themselves, again, they have got also challenges in terms of st uh, staffing. Uh, I think I, I'm even tired of retraining them. But today I was being assured that they will start uploading because they have only three 
editors. So you find that when they do the editing, they do the repository work, another thing comes. So now, like now, they are busy uh, preparing the examination or the graduation booklet. Okay? So those are the other challenges, again, they are facing. Uh, they do the, uh, the, the graduation booklet. When it ends, they will start preparing the, the, the examination booklet. So again, I, I say more multifaceted share of problems, but I've got that hope that we shall meet those targets right on. Mm -hmm. Well, hope, hope is there, I think. Uh, there's a lot of hope. Uh, <laughs> hope, uh, hope is a good thing. Um, yeah. I don't know if any other questions. Looking at the time. Um, closing remarks, uh, concerns, uh, additions, subtractions. Uh, in summary, from my public, uh, from my presentation, I think, and from my experience, me, I don't like maybe to to stick to the slides. I'm talking from my experience, what I've gone through. If you are thinking of setting up an IR, um, uh, the other important thing is you have to decide who, where it is going to sit. Okay, that department where it is going to sit. Okay. Uh, I've, our IR uh, uh, was because uh, I said it is a it is a it is a replica of our special collection, so it was in the special collection. Okay, uh, we noticed that uh, it was moving slowly in terms of because of uh, the reporting relationships. So when we separated it with, with my colleague, uh, these are the numbers now we are seeing. So you have to that is the most important thing. You have to decide where it is going to sit, okay? Because there are a lot of these organizational politics, okay? And then make sure that you identify people with a passion, especially those with a computer survey, those with a computer survey, um, uh, uh, because you have to interact with the system. A lot of things are happening, okay? Uh, immediately you upload an article for someone, like you have, have interacted with, uh, you discover a lot of things with, uh, uh, this space, I, uh, uh, you link it fast, fast with uh, Facebook, okay? And then people will, will start reacting. Me, I link it fast, fast. If I upload an article, special articles, it goes to LinkedIn, the LinkedIn app uh, software, and then you find that those people start having reviews. Within a week, you find that someone comes at, ah, my, my, my H index has increased. It's gone by one. Okay, so you need to identify uh, people who have got that uh, uh, appetite to, to interact with uh, IT, okay? Mm. And then the other issue is on the policy, like what I said, is very important. Take a needs assessment, uh, look at the existing policy framework in your organization, okay, to avoid duplication, and is, avoid the stepping on uh, people's toes in inverted corpus, because in the process, it will delay the approval of that policy, because uh, the policy is key. The policy will guide you um uh, how people or how you are going to mandate people to 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 to, to archive in your I, 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 the policy will even guide you how we are going to do the marketing the policy will even guide you the the processes like in uh, now we want to speed up the process like for these students uh, who are graduating uh, i think in 2020 is because of this covid outbreak uh what we had planned was it uh, immediately you are graduating a master's student, DGRIS, you are supposed to self-archive that master's document. It comes straight to our repository as they, they are still, the, the, the hard copy is still in the process. That's why the delay is right on, if you notice the 2019, okay? If the students were allowed to self-archive, immediately they say, you have graduated, go ahead and uh, do the formalities, bind the copy. You just self-archive it, okay? And then the assistant dean, they are there, they are acknowledged, oh, this person has graduated. Okay, so before even the hard copy is worked on, that, that, that soft copy will be visible and it will be accessible to everyone. There won't be these delays, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's, that, that's, that, that's my summary, right? Um, I hope everyone enjoyed this, uh, this talk. Uh, well, I, I can't speak to yeah, I, I can't yeah, speak for the other yes, eighteen yes. participants, but I, I certainly enjoyed it. Yeah. I always enjoy this talk. Yeah. Uh, well, yes, yes. Uh, so yeah, in, in that case, Zachary, just wanted to sincerely thank you for taking the time off. Uh, we really appreciate this. Um, 
uh, for the 5310 students, I'm, I'm sure most of what we discussed last last week and and uh, and and I guess part of this week was it Sunday or something maybe makes sense now. Um, uh, so I just wanted to yeah thank everyone who managed to attend the talk. Uh, we really appreciate this. Hopefully you'll be able to join us on Friday as well. Um, all right. Uh, thanks, Zachary. And uh, just in closing, the uh, at least 5310 students, there's, I think the interaction, the other interaction is going to be, uh, we, we are using a separate meeting link, so uh, you will find me on the other side, just like when you go to heaven, I suppose. Thank you. Bye. Bye.